Hey there, comic book fans. Uh, I figured I'd take a look this week at uh, something I got uh, a few years ago. Someone gave this, gave this to me, a friend gave this to me for my birthday, I don't know, two, three years ago. I don't think I've ever made a video about it. But it's the Michael Golden G.I. Joe Yearbook Artist Edition Portfolio. As we open it up here. Story by Larry Hama, art by Michael Golden. And this is from G.I. Joe Yearbook number two, which is a book I never even really knew existed because I'm a little too old to uh, be a G.I. Joe fan. Uh, I bought like the first ish two issues of the comic or something like that, and I they, I think they came out when I was in high school, so you know it wasn't was aimed at a much younger crowd, so I never really got into it. But I, I, I've always been a big uh, Michael Golden fan. And I never knew that he did an issue of G.I. Joe, since I wasn't paying attention to it. But this is uh, a famous issue of G.I. Joe for the Michael Golden artwork. There's the cover. <laughs> I like how he did a... Someone there in blue line wrote front cover in a nice little uh, fancy handwritten font there. But um, this was put out by IDW in 2013. I, I guess just because, uh, let me just pull all these out at the same time so I can flip through them. And it's interesting too what they did. Um, this is this is what they do for when they put out a single comic book rather than bind it. They print each one up individually. And they actually restored this in that if you can see that little yellow spot right there. That's because this issue was done with paste-ups on it, which is the job I used to do in the 90s, where if we flip it over, you can see the unrestored version. And as you can see here, there are the word balloons and the lettering. And they'd be done on a se separate piece of paper in vellum. Uh, vellum is the name of the paper. It's a, a thick, clear tracing paper. And then pasted down um, in the bullpen. Uh, so you can see... Look at that. You can even see where corrections were done and the white out. Uh, and the, unfortunately, rubber cement yellows paper. So you can see there's still yellow staining up here. <coughs> Pardon me. On all the pages um, where the balloons have been reserved. And they said they, you know, they, they, they sh first they scanned them with the balloons still on them. And then they scanned them with the balloons off them, but they, you know, they saved the balloons and they put the balloons on an overlay, so they're still with uh, the original. And an overlay is they just um, they take these, lift all these balloons off, uh, put a clear piece of acetate down, and then paste the balloons down on the clear acetate. And the clear acetate is usually hinged with, you know, an archival tape on it. And you, oh, you can also see there's a. Those, those targets are registration marks. That's how they lined up. Uh, they, they're not on every page. There, there might have been a... Uh, this whole thing here might have been some sort of overlay. Because usually um, these registration marks are only put on a page when there's some sort of overlay on it. And often they did uh, color holds and such things on overlays. See, this page has got no registration marks on it. So, well, there's some nice... Uh, Look at that. Look at those two down there. Some really nice Michael Golden art. This is a comic I didn't even see before um, I got this. Page two. Page three. As you can see, the. Uh, we look there. I think Michael, I'd put Michael Golden in the category of, I, I, uh, I, I don't know who came up with this term. It may have been Dave Sim. I think I first read it in one of his books. The Milton Kniff School of Cartoon Realism. Because, oh, there's all the sound effects. Was there, uh, oh yes, there was. I was just seeing if the zip tone was still on that one. Um, because... Though, you know, it's it's drawn very realistically mixed in with cartoon stuff. So I like, and if you ever look at Milton Kniff books, uh, Terry and the Pirates, that's kind of what he did. Cartoon realism.
Well, there's a nice splash. As you can see, that those those faces are fairly cartoony, but then a lot of the other stuff is realistic. Haha, <laughs> nice sound effects. I wonder who did the lettering on this. Does it tell us? Du -du -du -du, about this edition. Doesn't tell us who the letterer is. That's odd. I just had to get up and close the blinds a little bit because there was a beam of sun coming in through over there. Like, oh wow. Like, these vehicles are excellent. He's doing. Michael Golden actually influenced a lot of the image guys. If you, uh, by, from stuff like this, if you ever read interviews with the image guys in the early 90s, they all uh, tout Michael Golden as one of their influences. Like a face like that. Cartoon realism. Wow, it looks extremely cool with the uh, sound effects in there. I mean, a lot of a lot of comics these days don't have a lot of sound effects in them, but uh, they certainly worked a great effect in this issue. I mean, just the way he sort of cartoons that '87 vehicle all leaning forward to make it look like it's going fast, but you still believe it. You still believe it's a giant moving vehicle. That's... It does an excellent job with it. Sometimes the composition just looks better with the balloons in it, because they're supposed to be like this, uh, this panel right here. Looks a little empty without those balloons there, doesn't it? The composition is off because he left that open, you know, specifically to put balloons there, so. Without balloons there, it looks a little funny. So I'm glad they printed it both ways on the front and back, with balloons and without balloons. I think that's pretty cool. Wow, he just went crazy drawing all these vehicles and things. Look at that, balloons all the way through there. But, you get a chance to see it all without the balloons. That is so cool. Ah, just that... That little figure down there just jumped out at me. Just that tiny little... Well-drawn figure. Good stuff. Nice... Nicely framed guy right there. The areas with his balloons intact. Wow, he's got some great use of perspective here. Coming out at you, going back, going into space, uh, top shot, coming right at you again, coming down at you. Wow, look at that. I, what a master of perspective. Sort of looks like all the rat tat tats on it, clanks. Wow. Fabulous page, that one. But this is the, you know, this is as close as I'm ever going to get to owning a, <laughs> a Michael Golden page, so. Ah, oh, what a great face. Another great face right there. A little cartoon realism for you. Boom, boom, boom. These look like, some of these look like they were replacements. I think that, they may have, what happens too to some of these is, um, as you, you can see, it turns brown and it falls off, the word balloons. So I'm guessing these word balloons turned brown and fell off and they replaced them with Xerox cut, because that, that is not very well done right there. That, uh. I gotta say, IDW dropped the ball on replacing these uh, word balloons, if that's what they did, because they're not as good as the uh, original word balloons. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Look, great. Look at that. Look at that down shot on that figure. 
That is hard to do and make it look that good. All that gear work in there. Little tire treads and things. Another look at that. A great cartoon face. And a great realistic figure. As you can see, the actual word balloons are brown. So those other ones are replacements. They should have got the letter to re-letter them. Because, uh, look at how ragged this whoop is. There's a whoop along the edges. And look at how s this whoosh is much smoother because that's the original, even though it's browner. Oh wow, there's a nice page, huh? Wow, look at all that crazy detail and stuff in there. And the, oh, look at that panel. That panel's just great with that guy and girl there. Nice stuff. Oh, splash page. Wow. Man, he really draws all these vehicles terrifically. There they are with all their all their balloons on the page. Wow, look at all those figures. Cobra coming at you. Oh, these little figures up here. Look, I mean, who who draws such great figures like that anymore? A lot more close-ups in comics these days. I mean, that panel alone, whew. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight figures or so. Nice explosion. I mean, the, 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 the realism is all in the guns, too. All these crazy guns. I'm sure the image guys liked all these crazy big guns, too. Because they were... If they're influenced, matter of fact, I think it was Michael Golden who fur that 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 whole Spider-Man webbing thing, where it's all got strands wrapped around strands with things zinging around. Uh, I think Michael Gold, the, the um, Todd McFarlane said he got that from Michael Golden. That's what gave him the idea to keep drawing the web webbing like that. What a nice ship! Take a look at that ship. That's good stuff right there. Oh, was that the Baroness or someone? I'm so unfamiliar with uh, G.I. Joe stuff. Lots of, lots of great little figures right in there. That kid running the bicycle. It's up to us now, Baroness. Good, I got that right at least. All the G.I. Joe fans won't laugh at me. Yeah, those guys down there. What great stuff. It's the G.I. Joe team. This laser was designed and built by Russian scientists. Another group. Wow, just, just look at those. Wow, just those guys hanging on. I can see why this issue was so beloved by G.I. Joe and Michael Golden fans. I didn't know it existed, but now I do. So there you go. A little look at an artist edition portfolio, and this is what they look like. They're individual pages. They've got a few others like this, and I think they go for around 40 or $50. I don't know what they go for in the secondary market, but that's what they go for when they're first released. Um, matter of fact, is there a price on it? Let's see. Not on that side. No, I actually, they don't put any prices on this artist edition stuff. I remember that now. Anyway. There's a little look at some uh, Michael Golden almost original artwork, and you guys all have a good week out there.